our God, sing with me how great is our God, all we see how great, how great is our God, y'all know the song, come on, sing, how great. Oh, 
on, take it up. Name above all names. vote in Florida, you've got to be registered. If you're not sure if you're registered already, you can check using the link in the description. If you're not registered yet, or you've moved or changed your name since the last time you voted, you'll need to fill out a registration form. If you have a Florida driver's license or state ID, you can register to vote online using the link in the description. But if you don't have a Florida ID, you'll have to mail in a paper registration form. There's also a link below where you can download and print that form. Otherwise, you can register in person at the DMV, your public library, or a disability or public assistance office. But you have to register by October 3rd if you want to vote in the November presidential elections. Once you register, you'll get a card in the mail about two weeks later confirming your registration, and then you're ready to vote. One of the easiest ways to vote in Florida is by mail. You can request a mail ballot either with a paper form or online, but the request form is different from each county. So check out the link below that has all the Florida Supervisor of Election websites. Find your county and then click absentee ballot or vote by mail. If you send in your form by October 24th, you'll get your ballot in the mail and all you have to do is fill it out at your own pace and send it back before November 3rd. You can also avoid election day lines by voting early in person. From October 24th to the 31st, you can go to an early voting location in your county and cast your ballot. But some counties add even more days to vote early and times and locations are different from county to county. So use the link below to check out your county supervisor of elections website and learn where and when you can vote early. If you're voting on November 3rd, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and you can figure out where you're supposed to go to vote at the link in the description. You'll also need to show a photo ID with your signature on it, like a driver's license or a state ID, passport, student ID, public assistance ID, military ID, or a concealed firearm permit. There's a full list with some less common forms of ID that also work linked below. Before you go vote, you can look at a sample ballot ahead of time on your county supervisor of elections website. It'll tell you everything that you'll be able to vote for this election. You don't have to vote for every single thing on the ballot, but if you want a chance to do some research on the candidates in your local elections, it's a really good idea to take a look at a sample ballot first. You can even fill it out and bring it to the polls with you, so you can be sure you remember how you want to vote. But if you remember one thing from this video, the most important thing is to make a plan to vote right now. From what day you're gonna register to whether you're gonna vote in person or by mail, what kind of ID are you gonna use? And where is it? Even what time you're gonna go vote and how you're gonna get there. Write it down, put it in your notes app, text it to your friend, just make a plan so that nothing gets between you and voting on November 3rd. There will be links for everything you need to check your registration, vote early, and find your polling location in the description. Thanks for voting. How to Vote in Every State is produced by Complexly in partnership with the MediaWise Voter Project, which is led by the Pointer Institute and supported by Facebook. Hey, it's Daniel from Color of Change. I'm here today to explain why I think the 2020 census should be a priority for black folks across the country. Like many people, I didn't really understand the implications of the census. I, as a really young kid, thought that folks just came to everyone's house and asked if you were black and then kept it pushing. It's not that at all. It's so much more important. When the census is recorded, uh, so much is at stake. Over $600 billion in federal funding is up for grabs for crucial programs like SNAP, like 
medical insurance, like Medicaid, and so many other crucial programs that many, many black folks across the country need. And when we don't have the resources we need, we can't thrive in the ways that we deserve. 800,000 black folks were undercounted in the 2010 census. That is the same population as the state of Alaska. Just think about that. We deserve better. And if we educate each other and keep each other in the loop, we can reverse the problems that happened a decade ago because we deserve it. Black people deserve to thrive. And I know you agree with me. So if you do, uh, I encourage you to record your own video. It can be a minute long, 90 seconds and share it with as many friends and family as possible. When folks know, we can thrive. Let's do it. I'm glad that you're here to be with us for another WOW experience. Worship on Wednesday. Let's go to God in prayer. God, I thank you for this opportunity to call on your name. Jesus, I come in your name, my advocate, my high priest. You plead my case before the Father. And so right now, I ask you to speak on my behalf Take what I don't get right in words and express the true movement of my heart before the Father. You said that none can come to the Father except by you. And so now, as I prepare to preach your word, I know that you will be the preacher and you will be the spokesperson through the power of the Holy Spirit. For those who are listening, Lord, move upon their minds and their hearts and their spirits to receive the word, not because I'm delivering it, but it's coming from you. And while I'm talking to you, Lord, we need a miracle in the land. I know that COVID-19 and all of the things that we're facing in our world and in our country did not catch you by surprise. You sit high, you look low, and you see everything. Your omnipresence means that you're everywhere in the past, in the present, in the future, all at the same time. So you were not shocked by COVID-19 or the activities of our world. We need a miracle. And so we're seeking you for that miracle. Not politicians, not people, but you. You are the source of miracles. And so tonight I pray that as someone listens, they will receive a miracle from you. Someone will receive a breakthrough. That someone will be delivered and set free. And so now, Lord, all of this is in your hands. As I move into this teaching moment. Thank you now. In Jesus' name, I give you all of the honor, all the glory, and all the praise forever and ever. Amen. Come on. Will you just worship God for a moment with me? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, holy, holy, holy. Come on, worship the Lord. God in three persons. The 
Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, thank you right now. Thank you for this virtual experience, for this platform of technology to still do ministry, even though we're facing some very difficult times. Your word will not come back void. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on. Wherever you are, come on. The song says, holy, 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 but early in the morning. Thank you. Holy, holy, holy. Lord, God Almighty, God, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, thank you Jesus, God. Come on, come on, wherever you are. Come on, don't quit yet, come on. God in three persons, bless it. Bless the Trinity. God in. Three persons, bless it. Trinity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God is able, I tell you. God is able. In the, amidst this climate that we're in, the pandemic, we're facing the election of 2020, and I want to urge you all to go out and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but get out and vote. Too much bloodshed, especially for African-American people and people of color. Too many gave their lives for this privilege to vote. And so you ought to go vote just because you have the right to do so. Whether you vote in person, you vote early, you vote by mail, just be sure that you vote. Our country is in turmoil, as we see. But I want to talk about something. It may not move a whole lot of things, but I think it will help you as it's helped me through, I always have a subject on whatever I do it just makes it easier to refer back. I want to talk this evening from the subject, be careful how you think. Be careful how you think. And I do have a hashtag there, stinking thinking. Well, let me move into the, the scriptures. This is the foundational text that we're going to use. Other texts will be put on the screen as I teach this message, but this is the foundational text from Galatians chapter 6, verses 3 through 4, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And it says, For if those who think, if those who are nothing, think they are something, they deceive themselves. Now that's powerful, very powerful. All must test their own work, then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. Let's just talk about this as I, as I teach tonight. 
something here in my notes I want to share with you. And it's uh, too much to put on the screen, but let me just share it with you. It says something must be laid aside if a believer is to be a burden bearer, and that is conceit. As believers, we should not have conceited or, or vain attitudes. Conceit has to be laid aside. And not only that, but an attitude that breeds intolerance of error in others and causes one to think that he or she is above failure. When we reach the point uh, that only Victor Gooden or only whoever you are, you can call your name, can do the job for the Lord, we're in some serious trouble. The Lord has people waiting. They don't even know they're in line to be used by God. And if I don't teach another time, somebody else will do it. If I don't preach again, somebody else will do it. I know that I'm here simply at the pleasure of the Lord, and I'm grateful to have the privilege of being here. But when we want to come down too hard on others and 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 point out their errors and point out their mistakes, but yet not look at ours. That's this kind of attitude that it's talking about in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. Listen to this. Here's something else that I wrote down. The remedy for self-conceit is found in verse 4. And it says to look at our own actions. Now, if you want a reference, you can reference this with 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. And uh, I will uh, somehow get a copy of my outline and my notes on our website. That's uh, newlifedaytona.org. You can check it out and uh, download it so that uh, it will help you in your studies. And this means that when we compare ourselves to others and when we look at others from a different perspective, we're not looking at them from the sense of being equal to us. We're looking at them because maybe they don't measure up. But the question I have to ask is, and as we think this way, if you think this way, then who are you going to measure up to? There's a word in verse number four, pride. Now, this pride and the Greek word for it is different because this pride is not rendered uh, sinful. It, it's a different kind of pride. This pride is more excellence or, or dignity saying we will, we will become a cause for excellence or dignity. Uh, I work a lot. I'm in a doctoral program now at the Interdenominational Theological Center. This is my second year. I've got one year after this to go, and I'll be through with that Doctor of Ministry degree program. But in it, I have to always do something. I have to write, read every day. And being a pastor, I have to read, write, conversate, do things every day. So it's always something to keep us moving. But moving in things that we've got to get done, God wants something that's called a spirit of excellence. Somebody say that with me, a spirit of excellence. Now, when we talk about a spirit of excellence, this is completely different from pride. Pride is, is a little different because pride is, is a self thing. When we talk about a spirit of excellence, it's not selfish. It, it, it's not vain. It's, it, it's more of setting a standard 
And the Lord does want us to have standards so that we will uh, move our lives based upon those standards. Be careful how you think. Hashtag stinking thinking. Let's move into the lesson. Let's go to point number one. The screen's going to get a little crowded, but just stay with me. Uh, They will try to keep my face in uh, the whole time. Point number one is you are what you think. You are what you think. Either two ways of thinking, positive or negative, spiritual, non-spiritual. And so we become what we think. We are products of our thoughts. But it all stems from what we call character. Somebody says character. Character is that, 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 that inner thing inside of you. Good character is the fact that you will do the right thing, even when nobody is watching you, nobody is looking at you, you will still do the right thing. Let me um, have a diagram put up here so that I can explain this character a little better. Character is in the middle of this diagram. You've got character and then assimilating from character or or radiating out from character is the way you think. The way you think will determine your attitude. And then your character, your thinking, your attitude will determine your actions. Now, I call this CTA. Character, thinking, action, and attitudes. And so as you look at this on the screen now, the character is built in there so that we can understand that our character is important. That's, that's the part of us that really determines all of the rest. Because if you look, that's inclusive of, inclusive rather, of your thinking, of your attitude, and of your actions. If your actions are negative, that's because somewhere in your character there's negativity because then it moves into your thinking, moves into your attitude, and moves into your actions. That explains to us why some people have trouble making a change in behavior. It's because they want to change what they do, but they don't want to change what controls what they think. And we have to be careful how we think, because our thinking will determine our attitude and determine Our actions, the deep-seated root of the character in the soul is whether or not what's on the inside is going to be pure through the Holy Spirit or impure through other spirits which are not holy. And so when we look into this with Galatians 6 and 3, for us to think, uh, for those who are nothing think that they are something, is self-deception. That's, that's a vain thought. That's raising ourselves up. That's really stinking thinking. Somebody say stinking thinking. Well, let me move on just a little bit further and put a couple other things up here for you. Uh, let's look at, as we deal with this, Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he in his heart. Dealing with that which resonates from the inside. And in the other part of the verse, so is he, but eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So the heart plays a, a tremendous role role, not, you see, people can fool you, put on a show for a while, but if you if you hang around long enough, that real spirit, 
which is inside of them will come out. And so we have to be careful how we think, what what influences us. The things that go in will, will influence. And so we have to be careful what we listen to, who we listen to. We have to be careful the weight that we put on something that we listen to. And that's why we need wise counsel from the Lord to be able to help us to determine uh, what's good and what's bad. So Proverbs 23 and 7, but let's look at another uh, text in Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs 28 and 26 under uh, still dealing with, uh, let me put it back up here, still dealing with point number one, the character. You are what you think. So Proverbs 28 and 26 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. The problem with, uh, with, with, with this, it's self-destruction. Humanly speaking, we're only, we're finite creatures. We can only, uh, I'm in a room, and so I really don't know what's going on outside of the room, but the Lord does. And so my thinking has to be to connect with the Lord, who is greater than my own human senses, than my own human intelligence, who can take me throughout eternity. God is infinite. I'm finite. My time, my season will be over one day, either by rapture or by death, whichever comes first. And so I have to make sure that I stay connected to an infinite source through Jesus Christ, my Savior, that can take me not only and keep me in this world, but in the world to come. It says he trusteth in his own heart. He is a fool. Uh, one scripture says, the fool that said in his heart, there is no God. It says, but listen to this, but he who walketh wisely. I talked about that earlier in the message about getting wise counsel and wise teaching. Material, literature that you read will be biblically connected. People that you talk to that will have a, have a, have a level of, of Holy Spirit in them, that they will uh, give you good sound instruction. And he said that the person that walketh wisely will be delivered. And I know why. Because the Lord is going to move with that person who seeks and moves in the pathway of the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me, um, let me say this. When we look at these texts, that are, these scriptures that I've given you so far, all of them deal with the fact that we've got to be careful how we think. And uh, one of them has one part of it is really dealing with stinking thinking, and the other one, uh, positive spiritual thinking. But let's go to my second point here. And my second point in this lesson is this. As I take this one down, second point is stinking thinking. Get rid of negative thinking. Now let's look at Proverbs 29 and 11. Proverbs 29 and 11. A fool uttereth all his mind. See, that's that, that's that thinking that just just quite didn't didn't get it pretty good. But a wise man, notice the transition word, but, which flips that thing around. But a, a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. The characteristics dealing with this stinking thinking. Well, let me give you another one. Proverbs 10 and, and 18. He that hideth hatred, 
he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth, uttereth a slander is a fool. So, with the stinking thinking, slander is even involved. When you're around a person that's always got the negative part to say, doesn't have anything positive to say, you got to watch that person. Because that can rub off on you in, into your spirit. You, you, you've got to really guard yourself or move into a position that you're going to be leading them, praying for them to be led out of that and that kind of spirit to be released from their lives, one or the other. Because this is part of this stinking thinking kind of thing. Be careful how you think, because what it does is if you're not careful, it will influence you. If you watch enough of the same kind of movies or TV shows, trust me, it will influence how you think. I've been there, done it, had to stop watching those kind of shows because uh, it would bring back thoughts dealing with whatever the subject matter was. And so you've got to be careful who you allow to place things into your mind. You've got to be real careful because Satan will use it, if you're not careful, a subliminal, hypnotic, suggestive process that will catch you unaware. So you've got to be careful how you think and what kind of information you deal with. This is what I call stinking thinking. Well, let me give you another one under stinking thinking. That is, now now I want you to listen to this one closely. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. I told, I gave an illustration many years ago. Some of you may remember it if you do. Uh, I'm glad this is virtual, so you can't mess up my illustration and uh, uh, say it before I say it or whatever else on that part. This mother of a son was in a military boot camp they had completed, and they were at their graduation. And so as they were coming through graduation, they had practiced over and over that when they got to where the the high-ranking officers were, the, the generals and the colonels and the dignitaries that were there, they were going to turn as they marched by. They were going to stop, they were going to turn, and they would salute to give a salute out to, to the authorities there, to those dignitaries that were present. They went over and over and over again. This day, uh, here they were, coming into it, I mean, they were marching and looking good, 150 soldiers, and when they got to the grandstand where all the dignitaries and uh, the people uh, to be recognized, 149 turned and saluted, but one turned the other way toward his mama and saluted. And he was just a smiling. And his mother was sitting in the stands, and she said to the people around her, you know what, our country's in trouble because 149 of those boys went wrong. They all turned, and they forgot about their mothers, and they saluted all the dignitaries on the other side. My son is the only one that got it right because he turned and saluted to me. Well, it may not be funny to you, but the gist of it is this. A fool, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto, wise, unto counsel is wise. A person that you can't talk to, that it's difficult to get them to understand, they're not even making a way for it. Uh, they fall in the category that things are right, in their own eyes. We have to be careful how we think because stinking thinking can come into you uh, unaware. 
You can be caught up in it. But when you're caught up in it, you can get it out of it. You've just got to change that process and ask the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit develops you through your prayer life, through your word life, and through your living out the word of God, that you would come closer to the Lord. And as you come closer to the Lord, a lot of these things will change. Well, let me give you another one. Proverbs uh, 14 and 16 says, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. Now, that alone ought, ought to really help you dealing with this stinking thinking. When it says a wise man uh, fears, not in the sense of being afraid, but the sense of discernment from evil, and rather than, this is a godly fear that you get close to something and you know that it's not quite right. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you need to get away from whatever it is, move out of the way of it. And it says, but the fool rageth and is, is confident because there's no fear within that. That's the way stinking thinking will corrupt and absorb your mind. Well, let me give you a couple of more before I go to point three. Proverbs 18 and 7 says, A fool's mouth is destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Stinking thinking will affect your talking because what's in your character will get to your thinking. What's in your thinking is developed in your attitude. And then your actions are a byproduct of that particular, those steps in that development. And what happens is that we say things, and I've done it. I've had to repent from it to say, you know, I really didn't mean to say that. What we really ought to do is tell the truth. Yes, we did mean to say that. We just didn't mean for the impact, impact rather, of what we said and the impact of what we said on other people, the hurt we may have caused someone else or even ourselves. But we meant to say it. We didn't mean for, uh, for all of the fallout to occur by what we said. But the person with the stinking thinking, see, that will uh, come back in and come out in your speech. You can't think negative long and not speak it. It's impossible to do it because of the way that the mind, the body, and the spirit is set up, somewhere it's going to come out. And so when you said, I didn't know this uh, person could say this, uh, they even thought this. Well, you might not have known they thought it, but when they said it, believe me, that was down inside and it was coming from the inside because of their character because of their thinking, because of their attitude, and now their actions, whether their actions are uh, listening or verbal, that still, the actions are there. Let me give you one more here. A fool's mouth is his destruction. I don't think I need to prop that one up at um, no kind of way at all. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Let's look at um, let's look at point number three. Point number three as we go through through the lesson. Point number three. the right kind of thinking, the spiritual way of thinking. And next week I'll be talking more about the spiritual way of, of thinking. Psalm 139 and verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Search me, O God. And know my heart. See, heart goes to character. 
And the Lord knows. Oh, yes, the Lord knows my character. The Lord knows your character. The Lord knows our character. The Lord knows our hearts. The Lord knows the, the, the truth of our hearts, not just uh, what we tell people, what we tell people and how we really think or how we really feel sometimes may be uh, the opposite or two different things at all. So when he says, search me, O God, and know my heart, then the psalmist says, test me and know my thoughts. God knows your heart. God also knows your thoughts. And we've got to be careful how we think so that our thoughts are thoughts that are coming from the Lord and not vindictive. And we all have been in situations where we could have been very vindictive if it wasn't for the power of the Holy Spirit moving us into repentance. But there's there's one more thing I want to say before I close on, on point number three. Just one more, and I'm out of here. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, I like this. Beloved, here we go. Whatever is true, true, not a lie. Whatever is honorable, that's the dignity dealing with the excellence of God. Whatever is just, that's being fair with people. Whatever is pure, being for real. Whatever is pleasing, not being irritating or irritable with folk. Whatever is commendable, if there is any, and this is the word you ought to underline, excellence. If there is any excellence, and if there's anything worthy of praise, oh yeah, there's always something worthy of praise. He says, think about these things. Well, I'm done for this evening, the message on be careful how you think, and the main scriptures are there in Galatians chapter 6, the others are there. Uh, sometime this week we'll put my outline up on the website, or you can uh, try emailing us to get a copy of it. We can send you a copy PDF at New Life. Dot Daytona at gmail.com, phone number 386-677-6222, and you'll be able to do that. And so I'm grateful that you've been here with us. For those of you who have been with the Lord, and for some reason you are straight away from the Lord, now is your time to come back to God. And God's going to richly bless you. You're saved, but for whatever reason, you strayed away. Now's your opportunity. Come on back to the Lord. And the Lord will forgive you and give you another chance. Come on. If you make that decision, when you make that decision, let your pastor know that you are back home. No need to even call my name. The fact is, your name needs to be called before the Lord so that you can come back to Jesus. And for those who don't know Jesus and the forgiveness of your sins, would you just pray this little prayer with me? Come on. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and need to be saved. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Give me the chance, the opportunity 
of a lifetime. I acknowledge that you died and you were resurrected on that third day with all power in your hands. Come into my life right now. Save me. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, my brother or my sister, you're saved. Get into a Bible teaching and believe in church so you can grow in the Lord. Pastor Gooden here. Glad you tuned in with us. Something good is going to happen to you because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Be blessed. I'll see you on Sunday morning. Grace, peace, and mercy be with you. Hence now and forever after. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.